Okay, so here is what those plates look like. The original plates were made out of aluminum or aluminum, um, and they were four plates this size right here, right? So th this one size, it was four equal plates. And what it would require you to do was to place two of them like this on the bottom and then on the top place the one in the middle. And then the third, the fourth one, you would have to cut it. And because this was kind of, uh, you know, it was thin aluminum, but it was it was thick enough to carry the current, uh, but it was, it was uh, not thin enough to sometimes cut it easily. I know a lot of you guys did, we sold hundreds of these kids and uh and you guys actually are they're still in need of them because you, uh, I can see the comments on the thing we've been out of stock for a, for a little while um i'm just trying to make things easier and faster and safer to 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 make right and so this is my attempt at doing that right um one of the problems that it had here uh here's my first attempt at doing the pcb i made the these boards exactly the same dimensions that the um, the aluminum plates had, right? And so one of the problems is that the spacing is off, right? So I'll give, give you an example here. These two last ones, the two cells here, are facing the same direction. So the positive goes on top. And so if these two touch here, and they're, they're basically touching each other, right? And that's okay. They have this uh, isolating wrap around them, this red wrap. And that's okay, but if they were to go on a vehicle, for example, or something, and they there's vibrations, they that could wear out and they could touch. Now, if these two touch here, no problem, because they're facing the same way. But if these ones here touch, these are opposite, right? Because this is now the positive. They go around like this, right? So if these two touch here, then that would become a massive uh, short. And so, in order to eliminate that, what I would have to do then is I would have to change the distance between these. Right now, these these originally the bus bars I made of aluminum had uh, the same distance between all of these. They were kind of symmetrical, right? And so that would always be the case. Uh, and so I would have to change that, right? The distance here would have to be bigger to be able to do this thing in here. And it just never did that at the beginning i think the original plates were designed to fit a box a plastic box that is linked in that original video and so i couldn't add a lot of space in there basically this is this is the they barely fit in there right and so i i remember doing the video we added extra layers of tape around to try to minimize the chances of that now you know a couple years later there's better ways to do that and i did it if you really look at it now, the new, this is the first version. And then I was like, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to change that. Here's the second one. I added uh, bigger pads here so they could cover the entire head of the screw so that because that's what's just the contact. That's what's going to carry all the current. And you see now it's a little bit bigger, right? So because I added some space between these groups right here so that there's less chance of that stuff happening. So now uh, it should be much easier and much safer to build with these two plates here. And now also easier because it's it's much simpler. Now it's just two plates. This is the bottom plate, this is the top plate. Also using these allows me to put let, uh, lettering in here and instructions how to do it, right? So basically you just have to place them like that, put the cells in there and do the thing. Uh, another reason why I'm doing the change is because the, the aluminum plates got really hard to get. Apparently, the company that we used to do them, they keep misquoting us. And instead of just saying, like, hey, it's going to be an extra, you know, $100 in your order, they just cancel the order. And then they have, we have to go back and redo it. And I just got tired of doing that. It seems to be harder and harder to get more work to get these plates. So I thought, well, I'm doing a lot of work with these boards. Uh, and this, uh, you know... This process of ordering these is simple and it gets getting easier and easier for me. So now the only downside, I know what you guys are thinking. These are high power batteries cells. Uh, are How much current can these uh, really thin uh, laminated uh, boards handle, right? Well, that's what we're going to be here to do. I think most people think that 
um, PCB boards with their one ounce copper, right? So this is a one ounce copper on each side. So it's a two ounce, two layers of one ounce copper, right? They think that they can only carry like 40 amps or something. Now I'm here to, to prove to you guys that no, you can run, you know, 100, probably 200 amps here. We will build this battery. We will put a thermal camera and then we will run that test. And if, if this is not up to par, right? I'm gonna try to run at least 350 amps through this uh, pack. Maybe not today and a future video because I don't have the loads here. I order some stuff to be able to do that. Um, but I'll be able to run like 150 uh, amps through this, right? And then on a later video, uh, we will see if this is not up to par and we need to go, all we have to do is go when you're ordering this and then specify that you want two ounce copper. Now you have two ounce copper on top, two ounce copper on bottom, and I have four ounces. And you can go even with, you know, uh, PCB way, you can do four ounce copper, five ounce copper. You can really start ordering really thick uh, copper layers on these ones uh, so to be able to carry all that current, right? So that's why I think this is a much better way to build this battery much easier for the customer and much safer because uh, a lot of these issues with the seven when a with the spacing and stuff gets it got already fixed and stuff right so now it's just to run those tests and then you know basically show you guys that these are capable of running quite high current uh power right and so let's build that battery i have a box full of headway cells over there we're just gonna populate these and this is gonna be a super simple uh process okay so the only thing that i've done to these is solder these terminals in here right it's got three little points in the back here and then i also expose some of the copper in the top there so you can put this bead of solder in there so there's quite a bit of uh there's quite a bit of um surface that is going in here right uh we'll see how it does in the current right so that's the only thing that you would have to do once you order these plates uh if you order them from us or if you order them from um the shop that prints the boards themselves right like uh pcbweight.com now you don't need to put these in here you could also just put um you could also put just ring terminals on your cables and then just attach it to any of these here. Now, the, the cool thing about these is that they're centrally located right here, right? So we put two of them because I think these are rated about 80 amps. So two of these would be like 100, 160 amps. Um, maybe I should put one in the, well, I don't know, maybe like a larger one or something in here. Well, I'll look for another one that maybe we can do the thing in here and then that in case that we need to put that in there. Uh, but right now for this, let's just put it together. When you order the cells, if you order new, you might have to get the screws. These, I ordered them from one of our partners, uh, batteryhookups.com, and they all also include the screws. So you might want to get some washers, like a pressure washer in here. Uh, maybe not. I'm, today I'm gonna assemble this without them and see how it does but it's always a good idea to put a pressure washer in there just in case so it doesn't come loose with any vibrations if you're gonna put this battery where there's vibrations and stuff. So let's put this battery together. So of course, uh, should we do, let's do the bottom plate. So the bottom plate is here and this is the what you have to populate. So this is negative, so you could do this second row which is these two rows here are negative, so we'll start with that one. Okay, you just tighten it. Uh, this one has it positive. And there's that little gap that I built into the spacing to keep these safe. <laughs> Less gap in here, but I still added a bit of a gap in there.
yeah, these are all supposed to be black here and they're not, so no problem, we'll just move them all here where they need to go. I would like to do before moving on is to see if these batteries are the same voltage because if the one of them is like completely dead then that could be problematic so let me bring okay so first one oh 2.8 that's kind of low 3.2 3.2 3.2 2.8 2.4 2.7, There are mostly 2.8, but a few 3. Point something. Ah. <sighs> I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna put this plate in there, let them balance it to each other, and then they see where they end up, the groups. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This might even be too much, I don't know, right? The closer they are, the better. The farther apart, then the more current that is gonna have to transfer, the more heat. As soon as you put this in here, there might be some transfer, there might be a little bit of sparks, that whole thing, right? But we'll, let's try it. Yeah, I think uh, four tenths of a volt is it's a pretty small of a difference. Um, I don't think there's a lot of amperage going through there. Yeah, and I would suggest you don't tighten any bolts yet because that allows you to move them around like this to be able to put them in there. So this battery's pretty uh, discharge. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to charge it. All right, so here is our setup. I'm charging the battery using our power supply here. Um, I have to figure out how to do this the easier way. I mean, like maybe running the, yeah, running uh, traces so that you can, we can connect this thing easily more easily and then maybe just connecting two wires from one board to the other one just to connect the two or three other ones hopefully there's only two on the bottom but anyways here it is it's connected i put this thing this thing was beeping because number one group number one right here is the lowest right it's at three volts right now while the rest of them are around 3.2 volts so we're gonna charge this uh up to 3.6 and once they, you know, once we reach 3.6 in the first group, then we'll start charging the individual groups to, just to balance this pack up. That's the, probably the easiest way to do it. Another way is to do it is to use, uh, you know, like an RC, uh, RC charger, right? But that's actually quick, less fast because those balance at like one or two amps where here I can balance at, you know, 20 amps, right? Once I, uh, once I reach, have one of the groups reach the top end, then I can go to the second one and then put quite a bit of power to get that one up there to the very top and then go to the next one and then go to the next one, right? So this is probably the easiest way to do it. As you can see it here, you can barely see it because this is, has a cutoff as a three volt. So once it reaches 3.6, then uh, we'll, we'll balance it and then we'll test this battery. All right, so it's been a while here since we're doing this test. And look at that, group number one, which was the lowest, 
Now is the highest. Uh, no, the highest is still number four, I guess. Number two is the lowest, so it's somewhere in there now, see? But maybe number group is, uh, group number one is gonna have some uh, cells that are uh, low capacity. What happened here? Man, the stupid things I hate when they do that. Every once in a while you have to disconnect them and then connect them again. All right, so here's our setup for the test. The battery is slightly above Domino right now, at 3.3 volts, right? Uh, I wish I could uh, charge it all the way up, but I'm running out of time. So let's do this test. Let's just put a few minutes in here, see how much we can load it, see if we start seeing any heat in the actual board here. Uh, I'm connected to a 2000 watt inverter, 4000 watt surge. I'm gonna connect this as a load. I think this can pull the full 2000. Uh, something might blow up today. I don't think it's gonna be the battery. It might be this thing, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna turn. Ooh, what was that? Okay, let's turn this thing on. Okay on I think so let's see I'm gonna I think it's on the system is on power I'm gonna add a little bit more there we go it's one amp right now on the meter on the plant meter There we go. Oh, come on. What is going on here? Protect. So the voltage is 13.31. 13.3. Wow, that's interesting. Not sure why this is protecting. Ah, uh, okay. Now, I guess there's something up with this inverter because the voltage is high, it's 13 volts, and yet it's protecting itself. I'm barely pulling any power. Okay, so we'll have to leave this test for another day, I did uh, uh, order another one of these big inverters, uh, 3000 watt continuous, right? Uh, I'll look into this one to see what's up, why it doesn't wanna go, but for now, this video is gonna be about putting this battery together. The test is gonna be, is gonna have to come up later to be continued. Okay, thank you for watching this video, so we'll see you guys on the next one, bye.